Welcome into Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Appreciate everybody for taking time out of their busy schedule as we get you caught up with everything revolving around the New York Giants. Last week on the channel, we broke down a report from Jordan Renat of ESPN where he talked about the Giants reaching out to Evan Neal to play guard. Well, Joe Shane met with the media on Monday morning at the NFL owners meetings and said, no, Evan Neal is going to be the right tackle for this football team and there is no plan to shift him to guard. So I want to go back to the quote from Renan where he said, I've also on his podcast said, I've also heard that the Giants had talked with Evan Neal's team a little bit about playing left guard. So I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat. I've got a big head. Sometimes my brain works well. I've got a big brain as well. We're going big brain marsh on this. Jordan or not, beat reporter, ESPN. He reports or talks about whatever the verbiage you want to use that the Giants had reached out to Evan Neal's team about playing left guard. So if you talk to him about playing guard, and then just a couple days later, Joe Shane says, no, he's going to play tackle, that tells me that there had to be something across the way that made them disconnect from that idea. And the thing that it is for me is that maybe Evan Neal said no. Did Evan Neal dismiss the idea of playing guard? I think he might have. The thing that's the problem with that is he hasn't been good at right tackle, and he hasn't earned the right or the ability, in my opinion, to dictate the coach's plans of where they want him to play to give the New York football Giants the best chance to win. Because right now, there is a better right tackle on the Giants. His name is Jermaine Illuminor. And playing Evan Neal at right tackle right now does not give the Giants the best chance to win football games. It really hasn't over the last two years, as he has struggled mightily since touching grass in the NFL after being the number seven overall pick out of Alabama. A pro football focus grade is rookie year of 44, 39.8 in 2023. Pro football focus is not the Bible, but I think when you are ranked amongst your peers at some of the bottom of the position, I think that is telling. Also, if you just watched the games, you saw that Evan Neal was absolutely horrible for the past two years, and he hasn't gotten any better. But the idea that he doesn't want to play guard doesn't make sense to me because he played guard at Alabama. In 2019, he played left guard, and he was okay, but he got better, and he only allowed one sack, and he allowed two pressures, and if I was Evan Neal and I saw – in myself in the mirror, and I was honest with myself, I would know that this is my last chance in the NFL in year three to prove uh, that I am a quality player, that I can start and have a chance to get a massive payday. And on top of that, I would love to play next to Andrew Thomas at that left tackle position. The only thing that I understand that if the Giants don't want to move Neal to guard is that you want to give Evan Neal at least one year to work with new offensive line coach Carmen Brasillo, who has helped multiple players throughout their career have the best years of their career under his coaching. So if that is the reason, I understand that. But I don't know if that is. Maybe it is. I'm not 100% sure. But I know there's a better right tackle on this team, and that's Jermaine Illuminor. But let's go with what Joe Shane said, that Evan Neal is the right tackle. And we'll go to the quote also from what Renan said, that he's the right tackle until he is not. So let's say he starts at right tackle. I believe this is what the starting offensive line will be for the Giants come preseason game number one. Andrew Thomas at the left tackle spot. John Runyon, three-year, $30 million free agent signing, playing left guard. He was asked if he prefers a guard spot. He said left guard. John Michael Schmitz is playing center. Jermaine Illuminor, I believe, is your right guard. Evan Neal is your right tackle. I would like to see those guys both battle for the right tackle spot. And the guy that loses switches to right guard or left guard, but I am not a coach. I'm just a YouTuber. Grade the Giants' offensive line for me. We talked about this on this channel all offseason long. That priority one was going to be building up the offensive line. You sign Runyon, you sign Illuminor, you sign Schlotman, you sign Stinney, you go out and sign Matt Nelson. You made an emphasis to add proven talent. Where do they stack up now? Grade it for me, A, B, C, D, or F. I do want to commend Joe Shane for making a strong effort to improve the offensive line. Because I sat in this very chair, just let our seat, I'm standing as I film this video, I stood right here last year and bashed him for the lack of resources and effort he put into the offensive line. You got killed by Philadelphia last year in the playoffs. You didn't do anything. That's why you gave up 85 sacks. And I like Runyon. And I like Illuminor. But job's not finished, baby. This is not the offensive line that the Giants can roll with for the future. Did you get better? Yeah. But what are we smiling for? 
What are we happy about? Job's not finished, to quote my guy, one of the GOATs, Kobe Bean Bryant. He gave up 85 sacks last year, and you added two guards, and you still have a massive question mark at right tackle. And head honcho, John Mara, he knows that job is not finished. He said this, according to Dan Duggan. Duggan tweeted this out. I thought he did a really good job of summarizing it. So this was his tweet that Mara pretty much said at the NFL owners meeting. Quote, Mara called the inability to build a quality offensive line over the past decade ridiculous and something that continues to be a source of frustration for him. He said it's time for it to get fixed, and he expects the O-line to be a hell of a lot better after investing so much in the position. The Giants are, and they continue to be until they're not, dating back until Eli, uh, since Eli Manning won that second Super Bowl, they have been in offensive line hell. They're also in quarterback hell right now. They need to fix it. And they still have a major need at the offensive line. I like the additions they made, but I still don't think you're a top 10 O-line. I still don't think you're middle of the pack. And I still think there are major question marks. But I do like the investments that Joe Shane has made when it comes to drafting offensive linemen. I still believe John Michael Schmitz, after an up-and-down rookie season, can be a quality player in this league and be the starting center for the New York Giants for the foreseeable future. I pray every night before I put my head on my pillow that Evan Neal will be able to be just average in this league. I just pray. I think Joshua Zudu can't be also an average player. He's only 24. Marcus McKeithen, only 24 years old. So you have four guys right there that you spent draft capital on. This is why you go out and hire Carmen Brasillo. We talked about the reasons that he was hired, dating back to the time that he was with the New England Patriots. He is looked at, amongst other people in this league, as a great teacher. A luminor who talked about the development of his game and the maturation and gave a lot of credit to Brasillo. Can he take at least one of those four guys that were on the screen? and make them a good starter in this league. Because if you do, and you pair that with Runyon, and you pair that with Illuminor, and you pair that with Andrew Thomas, that's four guys right there that would be pretty good. Maybe you could just be average at that second spot. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel. We're your one-stop shop all off-season long for everything New York Giants. Free, informative, entertaining updates. Subscribe, turn notifications on, and let's hope the O-line gets better. Coming up next, major reports coming out from Tom Pelissero of NFL Network that J.J. McCarthy may just go number two overall to the Washington Commanders. What does that mean for the Giants? And could that mean Marvin Harrison Jr. might slip to pick number six? We'll break that down around the corner. But first, I got to give a major shout out to today's sponsor, Price Picks. Price Picks is my favorite sponsor that we have here at Chat Sports. I love playing daily fantasy sports, and the best way to do it is with Price Picks. It's easy, it's exciting, and you can turn your ball knowledge into major cash. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players and you pick more or you pick less on their projected stat line. NBA, NFL, college football, so much more. MLB right around the corner, NASCAR. And what I like is you could choose one game in college basketball or one player in college basketball for a game and another in the NCAA tournament and put those both on the same lineup. Now's the time to play. March Madness is hot. The NBA action is heating up with the playoffs, and I've got a couple of plays for my March Madness selection for later in the week. I believe Dalton Connect's going to have a big-time showing, and I'm going to go with more on his points, rebounds, and assists. And Caleb Williams, he is a creative, creative player. I love watching him play. I think he's going to have a big one against Clemson. I'm going to go with more on his point total. You can roll with my picks or fade my picks, but if you're going to play prize picks, do it with our link, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS, the number one daily fantasy sports app in the game. Check them out. I'll make sure all that information is in the comments, in the description, as well as making it clickable because we love and care about you so much. Alrighty, is J.J. McCarthy really fall uh, skyrocketing up draft boards like this? Tom Pelissero, one of the most trusted NFL reporters, said the belief amongst executives in the NFL who know Washington's new GM, Adam Peters, who comes up from the San Francisco 49ers, is that he will draft J.J. McCarthy at number two. Woo-wee. Y'all hear that? Everybody just be quiet real quick. Y'all hear that? That is music to our ears, baby. That ain't hard bell rap. That is music to the Giants' ears. Not because you don't want J.J. McCarthy. That's because another really great player is being pushed down the board. Please, please, NFL draft gods, 
Let it go. Quarterback, 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 and quarterback. Because if the top four picks are quarterback, Marvin Harrison Jr., Maserati Marv, you just might be a New York Giant. Shout out to my guy Dominic. Check him out on Twitter. He's doing awesome jersey swaps. He's blessing the game here on Giants now. Check him out. He does awesome work, and he's a badass as well. MHJ. The Giants love him. He was one of the first top 30 official visits the Giants had. And for MHJ to be a Giant, if it goes court date, let's say it goes uh, quarterback to the Bears, obviously, Caleb Williams. Then you go Drake May, maybe go McCarthy, maybe go Daniels. Four quarterbacks in a row. All it takes is for the Los Angeles Chargers and Jim Harbaugh to Harbaugh. Go draft Brock Bowers, brother. You want to run the football? You want to be a violent offense? You want to play smash mouth football? Go get the best tight end out of the SEC. It's a great pick, my man. And let Maserati Marv come play in the Big Apple and be the next face of this organization. Even if it does go quarterback, 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 and number five is on the clock and it's the Chargers, I am Joe Shane using the phone, calling Jim Harbaugh to do whatever it takes to move up to number five. I've said in the past I would only trade up for Daniels, excuse me, for Drake May or Caleb Williams. That was when talking about quarterbacks. If you only have to move up one slot to guarantee that you are getting the best wide receiver prospect in maybe the last decade, you go and do it. MHJ is going to walk into the National Football League and change life for an offense. He's done it for two years at Ohio State. All he does is score touchdowns. He did 28 times in 25 ball games, almost 2,700 yards in college. Big play threat, lines up outside, does whatever he wants. He's an unstoppable player, and I believe he's going to walk into the NFL and by the end of his rookie season be looked at as a top five, top 15 wide receiver in this league. And boy, oh boy, do the Giants need a game changer on the outside. They haven't had a wide receiver one since Odell Beckham Jr. They need that guy, and if you can get him, and then you kick the QB can down the road next year, and you have a more fortified offensive line. You have Marvin Harrison Jr. You draft a quarterback then. They walk into a much more appealing and ready-to-win situation that will help them be successful. Marvin Harrison Jr., you might just be a giant. This is what my top six big board looks like. I always love what Joe Shane said when the Giants picked fifth and seventh in the 2022 class. He said, all we need is seven players that we love, and we're going to get one of those guys. So – I'm going to apply that thought here. I just need six players that I love. And I love more than that. These are the top six. Okay, Williams, one. Maserati, Marv, number two. I know people like Marshall, you have Joe Alt, three. Yeah, I think Joe Alt's going to be potentially an all-pro his first year, and he's going to be a Hall of Famer. I got Drake May, four. I got Malik Neighbors, five. I got Jane Daniels, six. I would have uh, Roma Dunze at number seven if I didn't have a seven. I'd be happy if the Giants got any seven of those players. And then at eight, I have J.J. McCarthy, and I might just be happy as well if they take him. But I'm going to be crying tears of joy if Marvin Harrison Jr. is a New York Giant. We are so up. Marvin Harrison Jr., you might be wearing blue, baby. Do you think they should trade up for him, though? Do you think they should? I'd go to five. I would. He's on the clock at five. I'd trade up. Would you? Type T for trade. Type P for pass. Make sure everybody has hit that thumbs up icon. Subscribe. Done all the good stuff. Share this video to your friends. And follow me over on social media. At Marshall Green underscore. We'll see you later. Let's go Big Blue.